in future cooperation. Uh, or, of course, if you will have questions afterwards uh, to him or to his students, uh, you will, will be happy to, to have this. Um, so with this, please, Professor Morita. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for Dr. Rozwitski for your kind introduction. And my name is Yosifumi Morita. I'm currently working at the um, Department of Mechanic, uh, Electrical and Mechanical Engineering at Nagoya Institute of Technology, Japan. Uh, first of all, I appreciate to Dr. Igor, uh, my best friend, Professor Jegos Granosik, and uh, Dr. Igor Zbritsky. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here in Wuch and to meet a Polish friend and to have a, to hold a workshop uh, online, but not online. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. Okay, Poland. Uh, uh, I visited Poland uh, 15 times, 15 times. And uh, Poland is uh, the most uh, visited country in Europe. And then Nagoya, my city, my hometown, Nagoya here. Nagoya is the biggest city, uh, fourth, fourth biggest city. The capital city is uh, Tokyo. And it takes uh, 340 kilometers and uh, one hour 35 minutes uh, from between Tokyo to Nagoya. Nagoya and Tokyo is very close. And uh, Nagoya and the surrounding area is the biggest uh, industrial area. Uh, so there are many, many companies, uh, the uh, automobile and automobile related company and uh, factories such as Toyota Motor Company <coughs> in my area. Okay, today I'd like to talk about rehabilitation and uh, medicine support robot and the device. And I will take a seat and uh, talk. Okay, the contents of my presentation are shown here. First of all, I introduce um, my laboratory, and next I will introduce our device, our rehabilitation device for upper limb, including four, uh, three devices and one robot. And this picture shows our, our uh, member of my laboratory. Uh, Professor Mi and the assistant professor, secretary, and uh, two researchers, and 26 uh, students, including four international students from Chinese, uh, China, and Vietnam. And uh, for uh, two, two, one, one Chinese and two Vietnamese students uh, will join our laboratory in next April. Uh, in Japan, school begins in April. And uh, uh, my laboratory, uh, we have uh, many, many collaborators, including the medical uh, doctor, medical rehabilitation therapist, and uh, the professors at engineering uh, university and medical university in Japan. <coughs> and the uh, fourth year student, uh, this is a fourth year student. Usually in Japan, fourth year student will 70%, uh, 70% of 44 year student uh, go on to the uh, graduate school. Okay, and uh, my laboratory has an international partners for information exchange of research and the student exchange in China, Korea, Hungary, and Poland. Uh, this year, um, I'm glad uh, Professor Granus, uh, Granusik and uh, Dr. Zuritsky received my student, uh, Mr. Choki, as a research internship for three months. Uh, he is here and uh, please, uh, uh, please raise your hand. Okay, if you meet him, uh, please talk him in Polish. <laughs> <laughs> and we organize a mini workshop on war, uh, robotics and uh, medical engineering with each university twice or uh, twice a year before COVID-19 pandemic. From 2016, 
uh, I send the student to European country, European universities through research internship programs for one or two months, very short, very short uh, studying abroad. Uh, Professor Granosik received uh, three, uh, four, four students. And Poland, uh, Professor Kozlowski received one student. And these photos show close collaboration between Poland and Japan. I visit Poland one or two times per one year before pandemic. Professor Granosh come to Japan in 2018. Dr. Igor come to Japan a twice time in the 2019. The Dr. Igor joined my laboratory as a researcher for two months this year and uh, Darius Janiewski, who is a researcher at Poznan University of Technology, joined my laboratory for two weeks. And we have a good and close collaboration. I appreciate Polish friends. And this picture shows that my research on rehabilitation engineering. We carry out research on rehabilitation medicine for various parts of the body, human body. Uh, treatment device for finger, treatment robot for upper limb, uh, training device for finger, training testing device for finger, and so on. Today, I will introduce these devices and robot. Okay, so I move to the next slide. Sorry, hand uh, required in our, uh, our daily life for essential activities such as holding a cup, using a chopstick, knife or a fork, and uh, operating a mobile phone. Therefore, hand, hand paralysis and hand injured hinder a person's ability to perform daily tasks. In Japan, there are a lot of children to play with a small hand work. And this picture is crucial uh, homunculus. Uh, as you can image, the hand surface area presents only about one to two percent of the total body surface area. The motor, motor and the sensory areas related to the hand occupy about one third of the cerebrum and they're used to skillfully control the fingers. So brain and the hand are strongly connected. So by skillful moving, moving your hand, fingers as well, a brain will be activated. So I believe that by examining the movement of the fingers, it may be possible to examine the state of the brain. So now we are focusing on the hand rehabilitation. And now we also focus on the hand rehabilitation on hemiplegic patient after stroke. Maybe this is a Polish. Maybe it's okay. No, no, no. Okay, uh, this picture so the, uh, it's very known that it's very difficult to restore moral function of paralyzed hand in hemiplegic patient after stroke. So we can challenge to develop new devices with rehabilitation therapists and the stroke survivors. This movie, this movie, all right, <clears throat> just a moment. Okay, this movie shows a paralyzed hand after stroke. He tried to open the hand, but the hand does not open. 
A severe, severe hemiplegic patient cannot open the hand due to the spasticity and the weak muscle strength. So training, training to open the hand is necessary. A spasticity, spasticity is an um, intended abnormal and involuntary muscle contraction. When he tried to open the hand, the extensor muscles contract, while the flexor muscle also contract abnormally. So in this case, flexor, flexor muscle contraction is abnormal. So this is spasticity. But it is still now difficult to reduce spasticity and also cure, cure spasticity. So in some groups in Japan, training to open the hand is performed by temporarily reduced spasticity and strengthened muscles. But after walking or doing something, the spasticity returns or occurs. So spasticity is not good for training of hemiplegic stroke. However, this cycle, this cycle means a reduction of spasticity, muscle stress, stress, uh, strengthening, finger dexterity training. This cycle is necessary to create new network in new area of the brain. So collaborator Professor Tanabe, he, he developed a manual, manual, hand manual method to reduce spasticity, uh, temporary uh, reduce method, piston technique, and strengthen, uh, strengthen flexor muscle to open hand uh, method, a finger extensor, facilitation technique. He developed uh, these techniques. But this rehabilitation is restore moral function take much time. So it's very heavy work for therapists. So we develop, we are developing a device to reduce spasticity and to strengthen Flex, flex muscle to open the hand. Piston device, Paco and Iwaka, I will introduce the devices and the experimental results. And also Professor Tanabe and I conduct a collaboration research to realize terra-made rehabilitation or evidence-based rehabilitation by combining our developed devices and the robot and the AI IoT technologies. This, this project was in, in progress. And this picture shows that this photo shows the rehabilitation devices for reducing the spasticity. This is a developed based on the piston finger technique developed by the Professor Tanabe. We call this device a PD fin, piston device for fingers, PD fin. We conduct a treatment uh, with using PD fin on more than 50 subjects with chronic uh, plagic hand. The result showed the moral function was improved and the abnormal muscle tone has decreased. This video, this video shows the finger fist, uh, piston finger technique by Professor Tanabe. He's moving the patient finger quickly. After this treatment, the spasticity is reduced. And light figure shows uh, our piston device for fingers, uh, imitating this manual technique, very similar motion. And this other device uh, consists of the motor crank mechanism, a controller, and uh, also just to secure the fingers to the PD fin. These graphs indicate the increase, uh, reduce the spasticity. This is a mass, a mass score. This means that the spasticity was reduced and this figure shows a, a EMG. Uh, this figure shows that reduced uh, spasticity was reduced.
So this photo and the video shows a patient hand before and after treatment with PDF. Before treatment, the patient was not able to open the hand due to the spasticity. After treatment, he was able to open his hand because the spasticity was reduced. Now we have developed a piston device for foot, uh, which reduced the spasticity of foot, foot to improve the ankle joint motion. And this show the recent experiment. This is a new piston device, new piston device. Uh, this is a new piston device which can move faster than the former one. The moving frequency is about eight, eight hertz. This device is equipped with a, a force sensor here to measure the pushing force. The experiment on five hemiplegic patients after stroke uh, took place in May 2022. Dr. Igor participated in this experiment. He supports this experiment. The treatment effect of piston finger technique and the treatment with a new PDF were almost the same. The treatment effect of the piston finger technique, manual technique, was slightly higher but almost the same. This is a recent result. And this device are used for the muscle strengthening training or paralyzed fingers, eye perk. Even if the spasticity is reduced using our piston device, uh, the patient cannot extend, uh, cannot open the fingers, hand fully by himself, herself, because the muscle strength of finger extension is weak. So the patient have to train, training, do training to open the hand. This video shows a finger extension facilitation technique developed by the Professor Tanabe. This is manual treatment. The light piston, uh, this person is Professor Tanabe. The left person is a hemiplegic patient after stroke. This is a technique. Professor Tanabe holds the patient paralyzed hand in the hyper-extended, hyper-hyper-extended finger position, hyper-extended hyper position. The patient repeatedly moves the hand forward and backward. As the patient moves his hand forward, Professor Tanabe applied resistance to the patient finger chip. When resistance is applied to the patient finger chip, the extensor muscle become active. After this treatment, the patient was able to extend fingers fully and open his hand by himself like, like this, this movie. After this training, the patient was able to extend his fingers fully. And this is a recent result. Uh, Dr. Igor, also patient in this experiment in Japan, every Japanese people wear a mask, wear a mask, both inside and outside the house except in his or her own home. Every time we are, we are masked. And this is a new device. This is a new device with, uh, uh, which was developed by the Miss Ai Nakamura. She is here. Please write uh, your hand. And she developed this new device, iPaco. And the patient finger uh, fixed to iPaco in the hyper-extended finger position uh, pay, uh, while watching the EMZ signal. Uh, while watching the EMZ signal here and the uh, fingertip force, the patient to push, push the Spring here forward through the finger chip. 
And when, a, uh, when the finger chip receives the force, flexor muscles become active. So this is a training for the flexor muscle. Now, addition, additional experiments were conducted with a six patient in October. So she, she, is, she is currently analyzing the data. Okay, next topic. Uh, this is our developed training and the testing device for adjustability of grasping force, IWACA. And we have uh, many collaboration researches, uh, researches uh, using this IWACA with uh, medical universities in Japan, medical hospitals and uh, rehabilitation centers in Japan and this university and the uh, medical university of Uchi. Okay, human, human grasps a plastic cup like this. This, please show, please take a look this video. Human grasps a plastic cup with small grasping force, small grasping force. But human grasps a beer proud cup with large grasping force. So human adjusted the grasping force suitable to the conditions of an object, such as the shape, weight, surface condition, and so on. But the patient with paralyzed fingers cannot grasp, uh, cannot grasp the object, uh, object with appropriate grasping force. So patient cannot operate the object at will, like a chopstick, pen, and so on. So we developed the, this eye worker. This IWACA. This viral. The patient grabs the IWACA and adjusts the grasping force as training or a testing. The ability of grasping object with the appropriate force is frequently required in the daily life. So we define the ability to grasp object with the appropriate force as adjustability of grasping force, AGF. So AGF rehabilitation is necessary because but there are no training device for the AGF at the current rehabilitation site. So we are developing the training and testing device, IWACA for AGF training. Let me explain the introduce IWACA in detail. This photo is IWACA. IWACA comprise, comprises an elastic body. Elastic, point, point. elastic a grasping body, WACA, WACA, control box, iPad, and the application called IWACA Viewer. Uh, this picture shows the children's waka and the adult waka. Children's waka is uh, uh, two, about two thirds the size of the adult waka. The testing and training with iwaka preliminary involves grasping the waka with a weak force and adjusting the grasping force to the target value. A grasping force in the range of zero to 400 grams. This IWACA can be measured grasping force up to five gram, 500 grams, so very weak force. The user adjusts the grasping force by mainly controlling the flex, flex muscle strength, while the measured grasping force and target force line are displayed on the monitor. At the, at the waka, waka is operated by controlling the muscle strength. The user should have an optimal moral function, cognitive function, attention function, and so on. And this, this is a movie of waka being operated by user. The harder, harder the user grabs the waka, the higher is the measured grasping force like this. The when the user grabs the waka with a force of 400 grams, waka deformed, deformed by 10 millimeter. If the target force line moved to the left, target force line in the, this blue line moved to the left 
of the monitor over time. This figure, this figure shows the result obtained from the Iowa Corporation by a post-stroke of hemiplegic patient. In this case, AGF score is uh, sorry, the mean. As per the quantitative evaluation method, the mean absolute error between the measured value, red line, and the target value, blue line of the grasping force using IVA cooperation was defined as the adjustability for grasping force AGF. So in this case, AGF score is 25.6. The mean value of AGF score of a healthy young person, young person is approximately 10 grams. So 25.6 is not good. And we can see the patient, we can see the patient was not good at controlling the weak, weak force and reducing the force. Okay, so AGF score is a wonderful quantitative assessment of the dexterity, skillful movement of the hand. And IWAC has a user management and the data storage functions. Here, this allows the medical personals, uh, professionals, medical professionals to review patient results later. And IWAC has also the detailed evaluation function by dividing the training into 10 sections. This bar shows the total AGF score and the uh, AGF score in the 10 sections. This allows the medical professionals to develop the treatment plan appropriate to the patient's current ability. Okay, let me explain how to use IWACA in the hospital. The recently CI therapy, CI therapy has become popular in Japan. CI therapy is a constrained induced movement therapy, which was developed by the Alabama University in the United States about 30 years ago. This is a very effective rehabilitation approach for restoring moral function of the upper limb of hemiplegic patient after stroke. Our joint research hospital has developed a new therapy, new therapy, CI plus therapy, CI therapy and the training with IWACA. It's called CI therapy. And the comparison, comparison study between CI therapy and CI plus therapy was conducted and we conclude that therapeutic effect with CI therapy was better than that with the CI therapy. So this finding was presented at the international conference in this. And this figure shows a comparison result between the CI therapy and the CI plus I therapy. This figure shows a fugel mayer assessment. This is assessment of the moral function. This figure shows the fugel mayer assessment scores of CI group and the CI, CI plus I group and the CI group before training. This means the baseline of this comparison study. This means that there are no difference between the patient of CI plus I group and the CI group. And the right figure shows the difference, difference of STEF score. STEF is a simple test for evaluating hand function. It's an assessment of ability to move the upper rim. And STEF is widely used in clinical settings in Japan. So this graph implies the therapeutic effect of CI plus I was significantly larger than that of CI therapy. And I will introduce an example of the training effect by IWACA. This figure shows the target and the measured grasping force and the AGF score before and after CI plus I therapy. AGF score was decreased, so AGF performance become higher. This result confirmed that the AGF was improved. So, 
typically, typically human patients are not good at decreasing, decreasing the grafting force here. But this patient was able to decrease his grasping force as a, here as a result of the training. So, and the patient can handle chop six better than before CI plus I therapy. And in 2018, one of my laboratory students studied abroad at this university for two months. And he worked with the, this university and Uch Autism Center to create this new interface for IWAC, like this video. Okay, this interface makes it easier for children to understand how to use the IWAC. And my student conducted ex ex experiments with autism children at the autism center. It's a good job. And the last topic, this is a neural rehabilitation robot for restoring motor function upper limb of hemiplegic stroke patient. And this is also a collaboration research with the Professor Tanabe. And this video, sorry. Okay, this video shows a manual therapy for promoting isolated movement in the patient. Now here's a hemiplegic patient after, uh, here's, a, here's a younger than me. He cannot extend elbow joint and also rotate the forearm by himself. After manual training by Professor Tanabe, the patient can extend the elbow joint and rotate the forearm. This is a training effect. One more of this video. <laughs> Cannot extend the elbow joint and rotate the forearm. But after manual training by Professor Tanabe, the patient can extend the elbow joint and rotate the forearm. But this treatment effect is immediate effect. So patient have to get repeated training many, many times to learn movement pattern in the brain. And also Professor Tanabe have to provide repeated training to many times. For example, Professor Tanabe said, effective, effective repeated training needs 20 minutes per one day and 10 days but it depends on the patient conditions. This robot, okay, this robot is our developed neuro rehabilitation robot to facilitate the isolated movement of the paralyzed upper limb with a synergy movement pattern. This is our new rehabilitation robot. And this, this video, this video also shows the treatment effect of the treatment with a former, former neural rehabilitation robot. This patient is for forgetting, forgetting how to use the move, how to use and move the paralyzed upper limb. He cannot extend the elbow joint fully, but he can extend the elbow joint fully uh, when, the, his, when his forearm is attached to the robot. Okay. He cannot extend the elbow fully before the training, but he can extend the elbow joint fully when his forearm is attached on the robot. As you know, the baby, baby learn body movement and moving patterns, such as reaching movement and uh, working pattern in the brain through trial and error. So this requires a, a lot of reputation, reputation and a lot of time. Stroke survivors also relearn, relearn movement and the movement pattern with a lot of reputation. So reputation of the normal movement is very important. Reputation of the abnormal movement is not good. So we should create environment where stroke survivor can repeat normal movement and we are be safe. And the improvement of the, uh, this is the next treatment effect. 
The moral function of all patients was uh, restored after the relaxation of elbow extension and uh, flexion because of brain relearning the movement patterns after repeated training uh, after two weeks. Uh, okay. It, it's no, it's not worth me. The moral function was restored even in the patient. Uh, the shears, not table. Okay, this upper upper figure before training after one week, after two weeks, uh, his forearm was can rotate by himself. And before training, uh, he cannot do elbow ex uh, free, but after two weeks, he can extend the jo uh, elbow joint. Okay, the conclusions. I always, I always say this. We have been developing the rehabilitation support systems based on the need and opinions of rehabilitation sites by using advanced technology and uh, simple technologies. We need useful system, useful system that can truly help therapists and the patients and not systems that only employ advanced technology. Uh, such useful systems are currently essential due to Japan, super, super aging society in Japan. So we hope to collaborate with you. And thank you very much for your attention, Jinkuye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Morita. So I think it is a good time for some questions and discussions. So if you're curious, interested in Professor Morita work, please. But do you also put in some, I don't know, like extend like upper limbs or something like artificial limbs or something like that? Uh, limbs. Like upper limbs. Yeah. Like artificial, not the rehabilitation uh, devices. Artificial, artificial apparatus. Mm -hmm. yes. For example, do you do you do that? Also? No, no. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the treatment. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm not interested in the artificial mm, apparatus. No. Any other questions? Working with human body is connected with some risk of some damage, and so also have you experienced some other situation with this rehabilitation process? Are you in the because as if exoskeleton type? No, 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 no. The dangers of experiment. Yes, have, have you experienced some dangerous situation? Danger. Danger. Yeah, because manipulation with human body is mm -hmm. highly dangerous. Mm -hmm. Of course, danger, safety. Yes. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, usually we conduct uh, we conduct the experiment with uh, the medical staff. So medical staff check check before and after the treatment. Okay, before the treatment, they uh, have the pain or uh, something or uh, the condition of the skin and so on. So very carefully uh, we conduct the experiment. So, uh, after developing a certain device, how long does it take to introduce it to the market or uh, market? Uh, or to, the market. to the usage? How long does it take? <laughs> how long? <laughs> Japan is very difficult. Okay. Japan is very difficult. Maybe more than easy. Because uh, Japan's safety is very severe, so it's very difficult to develop a new new treatment device. So I maybe I send my lab, my send I send my device to Paul and then he washes my device. It's easy. Just the answer to Professor's. Uh, 
just to add, uh, Professor is now in the process of commercializing the Iwaka device, right? So one of these uh, devices is uh, during the process of being commercialized. Yes. Iwaka is a very simple structure. Iwaka is very cheap. Cheap. So it's okay, but cost cost is very important. Yeah, so please. When you're choosing your patients, is there like a specific criteria? Like, do you just deal with only like stone stroke patients, or maybe some people in an accident and have nerve damage? And anyone who qualifies, like, how do you qualify for your patients? Should you the inclusion criteria. The inclusion criteria. You need the for for the treatment using your devices. Criteria. Stroke patient can be crazy. Of course, uh, uh, there are many grades of the hemiplegic. There is a degree of the hemiplegic condition. So we consider the severe, severe level paralyzed patient. Because there are many, many people with uh, severe paralysis. So we focus on the severe conditions. Yes. After uh, discharge the hospital. And so I will maybe add uh, to, to her question. Uh, so, uh, did you consider using your devices for other illnesses? So, for other than, than uh, stroke, for example? Other? Yes. So, for example, for other children or for, uh, for some. Different illnesses. Oh. Okay, I work on. I work on is very cool. Uh, <clears throat> so now we use I work on the heavy present patient, autism children, and uh, mental illness, and the uh, children developmental disorder, and so on. The I work on is very applicable to many illness, many diseases. So uh, we collaborate with the medical staff. So medical staff find come new idea using iWaka. iWaka is very simple, like a game. But the medical partners, partners find new idea using iWaka. So we are collaboration with uh, many, many medical partners. So it's very important, I think. So I, I would just add, as you saw, Professor Morita prefers simplicity, for example, because of the ability to, to use them in many places and uh, to, to commercialize them. And this is what we also do with our, uh, you, you saw our devices, right? They tend to be simple because in this way, Maybe the route to market is faster and the route to patients is faster. Right? So this is why we choose to do a simple devices. So are there uh, any other questions? Uh, I have one question. Isn't a waka meaning something? Like waka sounds like some Japanese word, right? <laughs> waka is something. This is the waka. Ah, <laughs> I, I need an iPhone, iPad, I Okay. Yes. <laughs> Future people will ask what Balanikotron means. <laughs> you know, here's a second year student. Second year student. Yeah. Are you interested in the iWaka? Well, please join your work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, of course, uh, you, uh, if you are more interested, you, you can ask me about the collaboration on, uh, or uh, Professor Morita by email. Mm. 
And of course, uh, you, you know, our, our laboratory, we are very happy to, to work with you. So with this, I think uh, that we will end. Thank you very much for attending this lecture. Uh, this was the part of, um, of our workshop, international workshops. Uh, in next years, please join this workshop too. Uh, it was a two-day workshop, uh, maybe next time in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure, pretty sure. Pretty and thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.